Art Academy is basically an island, a safe island, where you can learn to craft through the hand that you have. It's a safe island. From a distance, it looks really safe, creative, and colorful. Yet, when you're inside there, it can be chaotic. <laughs> and we can feel lost. But the truth of the matter is, is to focus and to go within, sort of like a meditation. Focus on yourself and don't try to focus too much on what other people think of you. We are creative people and we are here to speak about our own vision, not let anybody else decide what our vision is. We might get lost, experiment with different substances, <laughs> um, walk on walls. There's no up and down until eventually we find the golden key to open our hearts with an infinite inspiration is within our hearts. Let's just breathe for a second. Because um, you live in this big city and probably have been rushing around a lot. You're rushing around to get here, get to your work, get to your hobbies, to your friends, whatever. And why all this rushing? There is no goal beside the goal you set for yourself. I have seen worlds beyond anything we know on earth. With so much detail, it is unimaginable. With golden temples reaching into outer space, they have to be rooted deep into the earth. Oh, man. Try to imagine a golden mountain floating on a pink cloud um, in space with waterfalls and colorful rainbow people. Our minds can create any image Yet we have never seen this, but our minds can only reach the limit of form. They are, ah, I don't need this. <laughs> they, they, it's, it's just, we are just limited. Actually, we're just dreaming. When you zoom out into the world, you see Rotterdam is just, it's just like a colony of ants, actually. So, disconnection through labeling. With words, we can create the world we live in right now. We can empower each other, and we can feel good, we can feel bad, just through words. Words are powerful. But we don't see words, they have no form. Unless we depict it. So this is a picture from Alex Gray. Um, in art, we can depict things that are not, uh, we cannot see with our eyes. So that's why art is really valuable. This is a work with, by Asher, and ooh, during my art academy uh, school, I, when I showed this picture, my teachers would often say, ah, it's just Asher, and they labeled this like, ah, oh, it's fake, and I don't like it because it's like, uh, this was hanging in the mathematician hall from the high school, 
So they probably don't like this because they label this to something that they don't like. So, but actually the world is really magical. On the left, you see somebody holding a butterfly. Or if you would label it, you could say it's a mandarin. But then you leave out all the magic. It's not a mandarin. It's, it's whatever you want it to be. So on the right, you have this image, um, which for me is really powerful. It tells that trees are not what we think they are. They are connected and they communicate through their roots, which we don't see because we just see a tiny fractural, tiny, tiny part of it. We don't see the whole. So life is based around cycles, actually. And yeah, you, you can think of this what you want. But it's actually, for me, it's a way of, of, of dealing with my own uh, darkness, actually. And to get through the light, you have to go through darkness. And labeling is also a strange thing, I think, because these forms are all me, yet it is not me. What, re what is really me is life going through me. It's life itself going through me. So with that in mind, with the idea in mind that I am not this form, my father came to me um, last week and he showed me all these pictures of years ago and I thought, that's not me, just put them away, put them away, I don't want to see it, it's not me. It's part of me actually, that's my history and that's who I am today. And with that in mind, I made this landscape uh, with evolving frogs and skeletons drawing itself eventually. It's the self drawing the self. Okay, so the world we live in is like a big bang, a manifestation of the one. And it's beautiful. There are beautiful things out there, uh, like this beautiful scenery. <laughs> Yet, we live in a world of duality. So when there is this, there's also this. And this, human beings create their own worlds. They create um, landscapes with like beautiful um, advertisement, <laughs> natural phenomenon, <laughs> and uh, look how civilized we are. We can build, uh, we can build th uh, things like this higher than the Empire State Building, <laughs> only for corporations that make us feel worse. Like, do we feel good about this? Like, drowning ourselves in fast food and destroying the planet while doing that. Oh, how civilized we are. Consume, buy, stay asleep. Just buy your fucking happiness. You've got two people in this world, the watchers and the watched. This digital technology is great, but it's also creating duality. Duality is like low vibrational, totally great. So, it's not all chaos. This is a work of Bosch, Bosch, and he depicted the Garden of Eden, where we are playing, and eventually the hell, which is here. Maybe some of you might think we're in there. Some of the people in the world think we are in total chaos, and it's just uh, a sin. It's a punishment for our sins, I think. And this is more chaos. Progress, in the name of progress, we destroy our planet and we, animals get extinct. This is another one, uh, example of duality and sharing in the 21st century. Okay, another thing that I found surreal is like, when we play video games, you've got like Mario who is just eating mushrooms, jumping in the sky, traveling through worlds uh, and monsters flying around and that is completely normal because it's just a game. While if I would take mushrooms here right away, then people would think I'm crazy and it's illegal. Well, <laughs> what's the difference? <laughs> so we live our lives through cell phones. I'm not gonna say I don't, I'm addicted as well with my Instagram and with all the social media that I have. I'm not gonna deny that, that I'm basically already a cyborg. The only thing standing between me and cyborg Artificial intelligence is just these primitive screens that we have. 
but soon they will be lost and we will be cyborgs all the time. <laughs> so if there is evolution, there's also devolution. Because in a world of duality, there are two sides. So we can drown in this technology or we can be empowered by it. The choice is up to us. <coughs> Yet there are also great things happening, of course. It's not just chaos. There are gatherings where people come together, like this festival or here, and where we can have human connection with each other without technology. So we are nature. I designed this poster a few years ago for a festival in Rotterdam. And I design it, somebody else is pissing against it. That's just how it works. <laughs> it's creation and destruction. <laughs> so we live in these houses, which is like honeycombs. I like that thing. And the similarities between nature and man <laughs> A tornado and the human figure have the same uh, <coughs> fractal ratio. <laughs> That's another one. It's just an example, but this is just what my inspiration is coming from. Like uh, lightning and or, or or veins and rivers and trees. When when you zoom out or zoom in, they they have a lot more in common than we think. When we label, we say, oh, it's a tree, it's a lightning, it's water, it's a river. Then it's all different. Then it's all duality. Well, in reality, it's just uh, different forms. Different forms of the same uh, structure. So in my drawings, I apply this phenomenon. And the, yeah, the Wi-Fi network has its own fractal. And in life, we have our own, uh, our own pattern, actually. So this is, this is a future depiction of the world, how I see it. And um, it's a maze. Like, you don't see the details at this, at this uh, drawing. But people are partying, partying over here. And uh, they're playing in the water. But you have to be rich to be there. And buildings from around the world are gathered in this picture. And buildings that have to be built. So it's the 7G Facebook Google network. <laughs> so breathe. Because breathing is important in all this chaoticness. So maybe you want to breathe in and breathe out again and let everything go that, that's holding you back. And just try to relax and sit comfortably if you didn't already. So creativity is like a magical thing. I would say it's the most valuable thing in the universe, for me at least. If there wasn't creativity, then I just leave right away. Like, and we have got like, we have like loads, we have too much stuff. We are drowning in our own stuff, which is great. But actually, this is more great. I would not say become a minimalist because becoming a minimalist is like, that's, that's just something from the 21st century. Like, I've become a minimalist, then you're happy. No, you don't have to become a minimalist, but it's great to look at white walls. <coughs> because everything starts from nothing, starts from scratch. And I guess many of you, you never really stare at the blank wall. You never do. You never focus. Many of you probably never focus. You're always distracting yourself. Ah, oh, doing this, doing this, doing this. From the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. While if you're just focused on a white wall, for example, of just the nothingness, eventually your mind will become really bored with this. And it will start to depict images on the wall. It's especially when, when the wall has a texture. You go, you're going to see images that are projected onto it from yourself from within. So for me, when I have this perspective, a lot of my illustration work is uh, based around this isometric perspective uh, because I create an order, a grid, and within this order, there can be chaos. So like 
this interconnected kingdom. This is a part of it. With temples and monsters and small people in there waiting in lines and doing anything. So this is real size. Somewhere in Rotterdam and me reading from the Bible. <laughs> so if you also this is another, another thing that I wanted to show because if you look at just an abstract painting or the texture of a pa texture of paint, you can see images appear. I might be crazy. This is from a few years ago. So I was a monk, a Western monk, and I drew all these cities with temples. And on the right, you see a hand, and which is pointing upwards. And out of that grows a tree, and out of the tree, growing is growing animals and animals and forms, and every life form is growing out of it out of the one. So in this city, I depicted man fighting nature. And there's a river, like between two worlds. So there's the old world in front and the new world in the back. It's like a snake uh, getting off his new skin and getting new skin. That's why I don't know how to say that. So this is me. Uh, flying on the ship of civilization towards space uh, to find a hidden kingdom hidden within the fa fabric of the cosmos. It's based around real experiences, actually. But actually, I can just say anything I want and make all these beautiful works and oh, happy, creative. But what we really want is see the world burn. People want conflict. We can say, oh, let's, let's be happy with each other. But what we really want is to see the world burn, you know, just destroy everything that doesn't work and create your own world that is new and better and how you want to see it with your own community. So I'm, I've uh, mentioned this book a lot of times. It's a uh, Codex Serafianus from Luigi Serafini, uh, Italian architect slash artist. He made this book in a fictional language. It's a, basically an encyclopedia of a fictional world. But the images are based around natural principles and architecture around shells or trees, which is more beautiful, I guess, because you can do a design uh, study, but then you have maybe four years of experience, while nature itself has thousands of years of experience. So just look at that if you want inspiration. So this is my own kingdom. It's called Rutopia. It was my graduation project. And it is a combination of Western culture, Eastern culture into one visual kingdom. I uh, at attached my own uh, writings in there. Below is the Garden of Eden. There are references to different uh, artists. There are references to religion. There's a temple in the middle which um, has the East and the West on every side. And we live in harmony with the sun and the moon. So these are examples of it, also inspired by Asian Tibetan mandalas. Many details that are based around culture in general. So I, um, I combine forms of architecture into one, uh, one little city. And this is my dream that I have, a world that I want to live in. And somebody wrote a biography about me, and he said, like, ah, he's raised in the, in the tiny village with, between cows and chicken. And th did he give his cows and chicken a place? So that's why I did. But then in a surreal <laughs> way, just cows as snakes, tigers, longer than you can imagine, ships with butterfly as a reference to Dali. And connectedness. So beyond civilization, we can build another world that's different from this one, like a golden temple behind the great bank buildings that are represented in the cities today. So these works I compressed into this book. This was for my graduation again. And this book is just really light. There's nothing dark in there. 
because I thought that's be positive. <laughs> yeah. And I sold this book um, during festivals and during uh, the end of the year 2018. I had my own store in Amsterdam Central Station. And there I made a mural around uh, the, the ADE, the Amsterdam Dance Event. Uh, an alternative map of the city. People came around and I had this, there were parties all around the city and I had this map drawn out and where you could go to with my favorite buildings in there. So, but most of the people are sleeping, so that's why they have block, block heads actually. And they were, it was actually the goal of me was to create a space of mindfulness in a, in a building that's really fast forward. People are in a hurry, they want to catch their train, they want to see the city, you want to do this, do that. There's only hurry, there's no time to stand still and really watch. So I made this place with yeah, all these detailed works and some musicians and myself playing. But eventually there was, there was over and then you have to start again. So this is me when it was over. I was really happy with that because I lived there actually. I lived in this space. I had no house when I had this. <laughs> <laughs> but I lived in the middle of Amsterdam, so that's great. <laughs> uh, but when it's over, I was really happy, so at this picture it was like pure joy, pure bliss. And everything is white again, everything starts over. It's like a mandala starting again, it's a cycle. So I had to start again, and um, maybe it's really dark. Uh, start surviving again, inside. And building up the kingdom again, you know, building up, putting lights on the ceiling, umbrellas, things that everybody has and building a temple, and this was another house I lived in in Rotterdam, with uh, triptychs and paintings. So that is the inside, this is the outside. The outside is, I live in Tilburg, which is not the most pretty city. But um, in my eyes, in my vision, when I walk around, I see that it can look different, and I just make Im photos of it, and I Photoshop it so you have these pictures of Tilburg on the next to the beach, and uh, I think that makes it more attractive. Okay, so this is the last thing. I have been to Korea two years ago, and I wanted to attain this picture because it's really powerful. I think, or at least, it shows a lot the duality between the two worlds. I come from my Western background, and there's literally like a, a line in the middle that divides us, the man on the, on the left is like holding his telephone and just speaking seriously while I'm drunk, actually, <laughs> and, and colorful and have long hair and stuff. So this world might be really divided. You have, if there are businessmen, there are also going to be hippies. And if there are hippies, they're going to be businessmen. That's the way it works. If there's going to be a world full of chaos, there's going to be a world full of harmony. They have, they're both there. So you, if you might be caught up in one, remember there's always an opposite of that. But don't fight that which you don't like. Let it be there. So let's see through the rational that we are more powerful than we think and that we can create our own world which is based around connectiveness. So that is my kingdom. <laughs>